<coughs> Hello there. Uh, my name is Don. Uh, I'm a, a biology tutor. Um, I also tutor in all of those other areas there, G, um, GCSE biology, GCSE physics, and I do AS biology and A2, A2 biology. So um, if you need uh, tuition in any of those topics, uh, get in touch. You see my mobile number there at the top. Uh, in this session, I'm going to make a, a video for uh, the immunity topic for uh, A2, uh, Module 4, uh, Biology. But my normal approach is, if you if you get in touch with me and, and need to tuition in any topic, any of the topics from GCSE, Biology, GCSE, Physics, 4th year, 5th year, AS, A2, what I do is I send you, initially I send you a package of materials in the post, the next day for that particular topic and that package will include a set of notes it doesn't matter what topic it is if biology physics whatever <clears throat> i send you a, a package in the post will contain a set of notes which are my own notes which i've created and crafted so that they're precisely uh, the notes that you need for the topic with no extra bits in and nothing left out and they're, they're well designed and students are always uh, trying to get their hands on these notes uh, <clears throat> so that they're very good so you get a set of notes and I'll also send you a set of questions and these questions are carefully picked from all the past paper questions to cover the most relevant parts the most important parts of the topic and they're mostly recent uh, recent um, past paper questions uh, also included as the answers for them, so there's a set of answers for those questions as well. Um, <clears throat> as of today, I'm also uh, supplying um, a set of shorter questions, which are more like um, revision questions, and, and usually it will be a booklet with about 50 short revision questions, and <clears throat> I'll also supply that too. So that'll be all part of the package. I'll send you that package. Uh, <clears throat> you can uh, work through the notes. Um, you can uh, ideally it'd be good if you do the questions, try and do all the past paper questions uh, without, of course, looking at the answers initially. Try and do the questions without the answers, and then um, you could uh, possibly watch uh, one of these videos uh, on the topic. Um, the, the video t today's video is going to be basically the theory stuff on immunity. Uh, it's basically going to be the, the details <coughs> in the notes. Um, it, <clears throat> I'm not sure how long it's going to take. It's quite a long topic, this immunity. I know from tutoring it that often it takes uh, more than one hour to get through the whole topic. So we'll see how I go today. Uh, I'll probably spend an hour trying to get through this to get through this topic and covering all the bits and pieces. Normally, <clears throat> in tuition, I'd like to do some questions as well and refer you to some questions as you go along. That may, be not, may not be possible today because there simply isn't enough time to do questions, stop and do questions and do the, uh, do the, the, the theory stuff as well. So <clears throat> what I'd probably do is, uh, um, if you want to then, if you've got the package of materials, and really to get any benefit from this video, you need to have this package of materials. You need to have my notes and all, because I'm gonna be constantly referring to the notes. You'll see me turning pages here, and referring to page 11 or whatever, and talking about what's on that. And there's, there's diagrams, and <clears throat> I'm not gonna be drawing diagrams on the board here. It simply would take too long. I simply wouldn't get that much done, and the diagrams wouldn't be as good as the diagrams that are in the notes. So everything's in the notes. So you should, if you want, if you want to benefit from this video. Get in touch with me there by text, and I send you the package of stuff, and then you'll be ready to go. You can sit in front of the video, and you can watch the, watch me talking about it, and you can leaf through the notes as you go. <coughs> or later, what I hope to do later is to go through the questions. Uh, maybe on a video, or of course it was by Skype. You can get get uh, get on on Skype with me, and you can ask me questions, and we can talk on back and forward, and we can figure it all out. <clears throat> this this topic of is not too bad. You probably already have done kidney, a kidney homeostasis topic in module four. Uh, uh, it's a relatively nice, not too bad, not such a difficult topic. Some difficult areas. This topic is not too bad. But it's quite long, and it takes a wee bit of understanding to get get into it. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, so what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm by the way I'm going to talk fairly fast. <clears throat> if I don't talk fast, I won't get much of it done. <clears throat> so I'm <clears throat> not apologising for talking fast. I'm going to go at a fair out speed <clears throat> to try and um, try and get as much of it done as possible. But if you have the notes and stuff in front of you, 
Um, I speed will not upset you because you'll be able to keep up with me because I'm referring to the notes constantly. And the reason I'm referring to the notes is so that I don't miss any bits. Uh, so I'm going fairly fast here, so I don't want to leave anything out. So you'll see me looking down at the notes and, and reading bits, and that's to make sure I don't miss anything, don't leave out anything that's important. And it's all in the notes. It's all in the, it's all in the notes here. <coughs> okay. So um, you, <coughs> hopefully you, you've done this topic already in school. So that's de a definite advantage. Uh, if you've done it already in school, you, you have the gist of it. You, you have your main bits and pieces, but you still may be finding it quite difficult to get to get to the bottom of it or to answer questions. <coughs> so <coughs> what I'm going to try and do is go through and get you all get you all the main the main bits. Okay, <coughs> so uh, immunity is about how uh, the human body is able to uh, fight off foreign cells and viruses. Uh, <clears throat> now, I said foreign cells, I could have said how the body fights off bacteria and viruses or something like that, but it doesn't just involve our, our body <clears throat> defending itself against bacteria, which are cells, and viruses, which are not cells, but it also this topic also deals with uh, any foreign cell that gets inside your body. <clears throat> so, for example, uh, a good example would be a cancer cell a cancer cell will, will develop inside your body, but it will be in a sense a foreign cell because it's not one of your normal cells. It's, a, it's a, in a sense a foreign cell. And so your immune system will try and fight off, fight off, fight the cancer cells and destroy them. The other good example is uh, blood donations. If you get a blood donation, you get an injection of blood <coughs> into your body to replace some blood that you've lost or, or whatever, <coughs> then you're getting cells, foreign cells from somebody else they are foreign cells, and unfortunately, your immune system looks at those foreign cells and sees that they don't belong and attacks them. So this is the way the immune system works. Anything that doesn't fit, doesn't belong to you, it, it attacks it essentially, which sometimes is not such a good thing, because if you're getting a donation of blood from somebody, that blood's gonna keep you alive possibly, and you don't want your immune system destroying your blood. Or if you're getting a, a transplanted organ, if you're getting somebody else's heart or liver or, a kidney or something, then that's to keep you alive. But hang on, your immune system looks at the, as it were, your immune system looks at this new heart or the new kidney or whatever and says, oh, that kid, that doesn't, be, you don't belong. You don't, you, you don't fit here, so I'm gonna destroy you. So the immune system doesn't have the, the nice to <coughs> not destroy advantageous things like uh, kidneys and livers and stuff and get transplanted. So we're gonna look at that. Anything that's foreign <coughs> is kind of attacked and destroyed. <coughs> so. Now you'll see on the front page there, most of this topic, however, is about how your body deals with so-called pathogens. And pathogens are bacteria and viruses. As far as you're concerned, bacteria and viruses, they're the main things. Uh, bacteria and viruses which cause disease. The idea is that not all bacteria and viruses cause disease. So pathogens are the group, or as I the name, a word that describes bacteria and viruses that cause Make you ill, make you, make you affect you. Of course, you you take in bacteria all the time. There are bacteria in your mouth. Uh, bacteria eat a yogurt, it's full of bacteria. Uh, <clears throat> and there's viruses all around us on surfaces. Most of them are harmless. Some of them are very harmful. Okay. <clears throat> so, on the very first page, there's very there's important stuff there. And the important stuff is <clears throat> that when bacteria and viruses get into your body, initially, they're not a problem because there's only a very small number of them usually. So if somebody sneezes on you, or you get a cut or something, you only get a small number of the bugs. I get, sometimes I call them bugs, just as a shorthand here. You shouldn't use that word in the exam. Use the word bacteria or virus or microorganisms. It's good, but not bugs. But I often use the word bug. To get. So if you get some <clears throat> if you get some bugs in, say, you only get a small number of them. You know, you only, if you cut yourself, you get a small number. So you cut yourself with a knife or a, something, <clears throat> and a small number of bugs. And then once they're inside you, of course, when they start causing problems is when they multiply. So they try and multiply. And you really only notice that they're there once they're there in very large numbers. And that often takes several days. So you maybe get, some of you maybe sneeze it on you today and gives you the flu or that COVID thing. And you may be okay for the next several days. And during that several days, what's happening is inside your body. Those viruses or bacteria that get into your body, they're multiplying. 
to get their numbers up. So they're going from maybe a million to begin with, or a few thousand maybe they get in to begin with, or maybe even just a hundred. They're going to make millions and millions and millions, and they're constantly multiplying. And they multiply very quickly. In bacteria apparently uh, can, can double their numbers every 20 minutes. Think about that, every 20 minutes, bacteria can double their numbers. So see, after 20 minutes, see, you get a thousand of them into your body. After 20 minutes, there'll be 2,000. After another 20 minutes, there'll be 4,000. 20 minutes more, that's an hour, 8,000. 20 minutes more, 16,000, 32,000. So you can see how the number goes up very quickly, <clears throat> increases very quickly in your body. Same with viruses. <clears throat> viruses maybe don't uh, increase as quickly, but they, they increase the number. What harm do they do you? What harm are they doing inside your body? So they're increasing in number. <coughs> well, <coughs> bacteria, uh, <coughs> what, what bacteria do is they may be producing waste products in your blood. So the bacteria are in your body and they're producing some waste product. They're throwing out their rubbish, basically. They're getting rid of the waste products and they're putting them into your body. And those waste products, for example, might uh, damage your enzymes. They act as enzyme inhibitors. You may remember from AS there was a thing called enzyme inhibitors. The products of bacteria produce may be enzyme inhibitors. Bacteria may also be producing lactic acid in your blood because lactic acid is made by bacteria when they do anaerobic respiration. And they may be chucking that into your blood. <clears throat> what do viruses do? Viruses are very different from bacteria in this sense <clears throat> that viruses invade your cells, they take over cells. And this is very important. When bacteria get into your body, they stay in your fluids, in your saliva, in your blood. They don't go inside cells. They stay, they're inside your body, but they're not inside cells. They don't take over cells. Whereas that's what viruses do. Viruses actually invade cells. They get right inside cells. And they use the cell as a place to multiply. So <clears throat> viruses cause you problems because they damage your cells. <clears throat> in case they take over your cells. And that's quite important later on when we start talking about how your body fights back against bacteria and viruses. <clears throat> Just say the other foreign cells that get into your body are going to be blood cells, blood transfusions, transplanted organs contain foreign cells, and cancerous cells. They're all regarded as foreign cells. Those are the main ones. Now, <clears throat> your body has. How does your body fight back? Immunity is just generally a general term for how your body fights back. We sometimes refer to our immune system. Well, your immune system is not like your digestive system or your circulatory system. Like your digestive system, you can see what it is. Your digestive system is your mouth and this pipe that goes down to your stomach and it's your stomach and your small intestine and your large intestine and all that. So it's a set of organs. And your circulatory system is basically your heart and blood vessels and stuff. So you can sort of pin it down. Whereas the immune system, what exactly is it? It, it? Where is it at? It's nowhere in particular. It's just a whole collection of things that help you to fight off disease. Yeah, And it starts the start point for your immune system. The first thing, it, the start, uh, first part of your immune system, and we're going to look at your immune system, and we're going to say there's three lines of defense. Three lines of defense. So what, what we're getting at is there's what's called, initially, there's natural barriers. Now, natural barriers are just things like your skin that stops bugs getting inside, bacteria in your skin inside. <coughs> um, tears in your eyes, they contain <coughs> an enzyme that, that destroys bacteria. Mucus up your nose, stuff that's up your nose, traps bacteria. These are all described <coughs> as what are called natural barriers. So the natural things to do with your body to prevent bacteria and virus getting in. And you'll see there on page two, <coughs> I've listed some skin that said, there's several layers of skin acting as a barrier. Oh, blood clotting. So that's a natural barrier. So you cut yourself. There's a blood clot that stops the bug getting in. <coughs> um, things like tears, saliva. Saliva traps the bacteria. <coughs> sweat. Sweat's salty. That'll kill bacteria. Mucus up your nose. Traps bacteria and stops them going down into your lungs and so on. <coughs> okay. And then stomach acid. There's another one. The acid in your stomach kills bacteria. So if you eat a bad feed food with bacteria in it, food poisoning, like bad food, then the bacteria get killed by the stomach acid. Okay, so those are all natural viruses. This is the first line of defense against bugs getting into your body. <coughs> now, <coughs> okay, what's the second line of defense? Well, <coughs> say something does get into your body. Say you cut yourself. I've got a pair of scissors here. Say you cut yourself with this pair of scissors or stab yourself, make a hole or something. 
or damage yourself or scratch yourself shaving or something like that <coughs> or some other thing then <coughs> you've made a you've made an opening and now bacteria and viruses could get in so on the surface of them press scissors there there could be bacteria bacteria and viruses that actually get in through the so now you have a problem you've left the bacteria inside or the virus to get inside <coughs> and they, once they get inside then they can get into your bloodstream and make their way into your blood now here's here's where the second line of defense is <clears throat> in your blood there are what are called white blood cells and if you remember back to GCSE white blood cells there was ones called phagocytes and lymphocytes okay it's the ones called phagocytes that were insisted on here phagocytes they were the ones that remember ate bacteria and engulfed them and digested them so these <clears throat> these white blood cells in your blood once the bacteria viruses get in through the wound these white blood cells basically gobble them up you wouldn't write that in the exam <laughs> but you'd say engulf and digest the bacteria and you'll see that on the bottom of page two there <clears throat> the action of phagocytes and you can see <clears throat> what they do is a phagocytes a white blood cell that approaches the bacteria it engulfs and takes them inside and starts to break them down so that's your second line of defense so if you make any openings in your body <clears throat> scratches cuts damage whatever these white blood cells come to the wound your blood's flowing past the wound white blood cells come out of the blood and start to gobble up the bacteria and viruses <clears throat> by the way those white blood cells you can see them sometimes you know the way you get zits on your face and you get white stuff and some people squeeze them those those zits contain the, <clears throat> the remnants of the white blood cells and the dead bacteria and viruses so that's the whiteness there that's the white blood cells and those zits. so that's the second line of defense so you're hoping you're hoping so far that that there stops the bacteria and viruses going any further once they get into your blood you want these fake sites to gobble them up and destroy them <coughs> now let's say the bacteria and viruses get past those fake sites now the bacteria and viruses where are they at they're in your blood okay they're in the, the blood like a big river flowing around your body <coughs> so now they're in the blood they can go anywhere in your body they can travel anywhere so they can stay in the blood and they can swim around you but keep going around your body and <clears throat> your blood's going around your body very quickly it's traveling through your heart <clears throat> all your blood's probably going through your heart every <clears throat> probably every minute or so all the blood that you have is going through your heart every minute so the blood's going around fairly fast these bacteria and viruses can go wherever they can can go wherever they want <clears throat> in your body <clears throat> now here's for the next line so how do you how do you defeat them now how do you defeat them now <clears throat> this is next thing is called the specific it's called the specific immune response don't worry too much with that word specific <clears throat> but it involves the other white blood cells and the other white blood cells are lymphocytes l-y-m-p-h-o-c-y-t-e-s lymphocytes <clears throat> and there's two types of them there's b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes b and t okay b and t no white blood cells b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes <clears throat> now <clears throat> what you would say about them is <clears throat> they are in your blood the white blood cells and they're going around in your blood and <clears throat> basically what happens is if they meet up with a bug say that say they're going along in the blood and there's a bug <clears throat> coming along as well a bacteria or a virus then they spot them the lymphocytes detect or spot the, the bacteria virus in your bloodstream and they, they're going to respond now, uh, to the bacteria virus now we have to discuss the, what, what each of them does the B lymphocytes do something from the T lymphocytes the B lymphocytes actually make things called antibodies and the antibodies are like weapons that are released from the B lymphocyte and they sort of attach to the bacteria or virus and somehow they're destroyed okay so they're a bit like I imagine they're a bit like spears they're, they're usually drawn long and slender sometimes they're, they're drawn like this with like a sort of a, like that and the, the, the antibody or it may have a double end double end like that so they're and they're released from the the uh, in the lymphocyte and they go and attack and destroy the bacteria now just before we're on page three here just before we we talk with these antibodies here's the question how does a lymphocyte, either a B lymphocyte or a T lymphocyte, recognize the foreign 
cells recognize the bacteria or viruses? How does it know them from all your own cells, all your red blood cells and everything else? How does, in other words, how does the, how does the lymphocyte detect a foreign cell? And the answer is <clears throat> because all cells, all cells, your cells, your red blood cells, all your cells, and all other cells and viruses have on their surface a kind of a marker thing, a marker molecule called an antigen, an antigen. So on the surface of the bacteria, there's something on the surface of the bacteria that spots it out as being foreign. And your lymphocytes can spot your own cells, those your own cells, because you've got, they've got your antigens, your own antigens. They're called, your own antigens are called self-antigens. Whereas the foreign cells, they've got what are called non-self-antigens. So with GCSE, how do we draw these antigens? Like, for example, if we said that's a bacteria, a GCSE would have drawn a bacteria like that, and then it would have stuck some spikes on them like this, some bunch of guts around the surface. Then we said, those are his antigens. Those spikes on his surface are his antigens. They're like a kind of a marker on the surface that <coughs> identifies them. Okay, so your, your white blood cells, your lymphocytes, spots these antigens and says, oh, those don't belong. That cell doesn't belong here. Those are not our antigens. <coughs> these, those are foreign antigens. And that uh, lymphocyte then attacks the virus, it attacks the bacteria or virus because it recognizes its foreign antigens. <coughs> so you'll see that's all talked about in page three there. At the bottom of page three, you'll see I've drawn some, some cells that are in your own, in your body. So I've said your own skin cell and your, your red blood cell and your liver cells and so on. And you see they all have your antigens, your self antigen. But anything that's foreign, the things over to the right there, what have I got? I've got a bacteria, a virus, someone else's liver cell, someone else's red blood cell, and you notice they've all got they've all got different antigens to yours. And so your lymphocytes can detect them, detect them as different, you can attack them. <coughs> now uh, so basically what's happened is these lymphocytes, your lymphocytes are you know, your B and T lymphocytes are in your bloodstream and they, they encounter or meet up with uh, some of these foreign cells meet up with some of the bacteria viruses they've got in and they spot them. And once they meet up with them, they come in contact with them. <coughs> and at that point you see the B lymphocyte or T lymphocyte is said to be sensitized. It's a kind of switched on. Once it meets up with the bacteria, it kind of goes into overdrive. And it's, it's, it's switched on, it's said to be sensitized. And it's important you'd use a word like that. So I'm at the bottom of page bottom page four here, I'm saying, <clears throat> uh, act, another word for sensitized is activated. So I've said activation lymphocytes. I've said this, this is what happens when B or T lymphocytes come in contact with an antigen that fits their protein receptor. So they've got, they've got things on their surface called protein receptors. And once it fits onto this foreign antigen, you say that these cells are sensitized. And once they lock on to the antigen, so uh, lock on to the antigen. So for example, your lymphocyte might actually sort of lock on to this. So this is your lymphocyte here, and it kind of locks on to that antigen there. Once it locks on to it, then locks on to the bacteria, it, 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 it's, it's said to be sensitized. So that's your, that's your lymphocyte, that's the bacteria. <coughs> and once, once the lymphocyte does lock on to the bacteria, what it's said to be sensitized or activated. What happens? Well, in fact, what happens, that makes this lymphocyte multiply. So there's millions of them. You can't fight off a disease with just one lymphocyte. You need millions of them. So once it locks onto the bacteria, it makes millions like itself. And the, the, the process that allows you to make many more cells like yourself is called mitosis. So it does, a process, it does a kind of cell division called mitosis, and it makes millions, like itself. In other words, it makes like an army of lymphocytes ready to fight off these bacteria. <coughs> uh, now, notice I kept saying that there's two types of lymphocytes. There's so-called B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Sometimes they're called just B cells and T cells, B lymphocytes and T cells. So we've been mentioning those would go along. Now, this is often where the confusion comes. You're wondering, 
What do you need with two? Or what is the two? How are the two different? Well, the B lymphocytes make antibodies. So B with make antibodies. B lymphocytes make antibodies. The T lymphocytes, they've got a very special job. <clears throat> they destroy cells that are full of viruses. Okay? Now, <clears throat> they destroy cells that are full of viruses. Now, here's, here's the tricky bit then. Which of these, <clears throat> you could ask, attacks, for example, bacteria, first of all? Bacteria or viruses? Which of them does, the, which of them goes first to attack the bacteria? And the answer is it's the B lymphocytes. Because the B lymphocytes can detect either a bacteria or a virus in the bloodstream, in your blood. And sometimes those bacteria and viruses are said to be free in the bloodstream. So you've got bacteria and viruses in your bloodstream. Okay? And it's the B lymphocytes that spots them and attacks them. And basically how the B lymphocyte, what the B lymphocyte does is it makes antibodies that destroys them. <coughs> okay? So we're going to look at B lymphocytes. T lymphocytes then, they're going to come later. Okay, but we're going to talk about the B lymphocytes first of all. So <coughs> we're on to page, I think it's page five there. When we're talking about how the B lymphocytes attack bacteria and viruses, it's called antibody mediated immunity. A bit of a mouthful. <laughs> antibody mediated immunity. Basically means immunity brought about by that's the mediate of it, brought about by antibodies. And that's what B lymphocytes do. So if you want to write up the top of the page, antibody mediated, if you want to write up there, B lymphocytes. This is all due to B lymphocytes. <coughs> and B lymphocytes will detect bacteria and viruses that are free that are in your bloodstream. That are in your bloodstream, and what they do, <coughs> it's basically summarized down in the wee box in the wee table, wee, the wee diagrams at the bottom of the page. There, very very simple. If you know those four wee boxes there at the bottom of the page, then you've got <coughs> antibody mediated immunity. You can under, you can understand what happens. So you'll see box one says the back say bacteria. You see it says bacteria. That you could you could write about bacteria or viruses. Doesn't matter. Invade the body. <clears throat> and there's an antigen on the surface of the bacteria virus. And you'd see the bacteria and there's the antigen. Antigens on the surface. On this outer surface. <clears throat> now, on, and in box number two it says, oh, the bacteria's antigen is recognized by the correct B cell. B cell, you can see B lymphocyte, with the complementary receptor. You see, here's the story. There's lots of these B lymphocytes in your bloodstream. Lots of them. And they all <clears throat> detect different antigens. So there'll only be one B lymphocyte that's, that suits this bacteria. And you can see there, <coughs> in that B diagram, that it's described as the correct B cell, the correct B lymphocyte. That's the one you see that's got the, <coughs> the receptor that fits onto that antigen. It's all to do with fitting on. You see that, the correct one. The other two are of no use. They're not needed here. It's going to be that one that's described as the correct one. And notice then in box three what the correct one does, what that B lymphocyte does. It attaches on to the to the antigen of the bacteria, and at that point it's said to be sensitized. So I'm I'm emphasizing here one of these pens is useful. I'm emphasizing the word sensitized there. So you see what it says: the sensitized the the, the B lymphocyte is attached to the bacteria, and it's said to be sensitized. <clears throat> and what does it do when it's sensitized? It divides. It's in the two lines there. It divides by mitosis to produce. Plasma cells and memory cells. Okay. <clears throat> now, usually, what I say is, I say it's slightly different. I say when the when the B lymphocyte attaches to the, <clears throat> to the bacteria, it's sensitized, and then it divides by mitosis to make millions, millions of it, like mix an army, of <clears throat> that are all identical to it, and then some of those become plasma cells, and some of that army become. <clears throat> what are called B memory cells, plasma cells and B memory cells. Now, <clears throat> the B memory cells are not so important now. It's the plasma cells because it's the plasma cells that make these things called antibodies. So that you'll see in the next box it says the plasma cells produce antibodies. So I highlight that the plasma cells make antibodies. <clears throat> and you can see the antibodies there being produced and they sort of look like. Uh, the sort of on that diagram, they just sort of look like uh, look like sort of like, like that, like Y's Y shaped 
So those are the antibodies, and you can see it says there, the antibodies destroy the bacteria. Okay. And now, just before we leave this, you remember the memory, see in, in box three it says memory B cells. Well, you remember this from GCSE, that <clears throat> you also, as well as trying to destroy the bacteria, you make these cells called memory cells, and they stay in your bloodstream, stay in your body for maybe your whole life. And what they're there for is they're, they'll, they'll spot that bacteria if it ever comes back again. So they're the ones that stop you getting measles again. If you get measles as a child, usually you don't ever get measles again because these, these B memory cells stay in your blood, stay in your body for the rest of your life. And you, <coughs> every, everybody contains lots of, of B memory cells. So if you ever had any disease at all, like whipping cough or, or meningitis or any of these things or any other diseases as a child, you should have memory cells for it. That's why you don't get the disease the second time. Because these memory cells kind of lie in wait and you stay in your body because if the disease comes back, they attack it very quickly and destroy it. <clears throat> but it's the plasma cells here. And I would highlight plasma cells, plasma cells that make the animal. <clears throat> now, if you turn the page then uh, to page 8, you see that <clears throat> the first four points there are really just summarizing that again. They're just, that's just summarizing antibody media. In case it's just summarized in, in lines. <coughs> now, the question is a wee, a wee bit now, but what are these antibodies? I describe them as kind of like weapons or something that they, you know, say produces and it goes in and destroys the bacteria. <coughs> but they're, they're not, we you can't call them weapons, they're actually proteins. They're globular proteins, globular proteins, <coughs> which are complementary in shape. To the antigen complementary chip that means they fit onto the antigen so the antibodies sort of are the right ship this this bit of them here you see fits the antigen so they sort of lock on to the antigen okay <coughs> and uh, once they attach the antigen then that might cause that causes the, the bacteria to be destroyed somehow or other. we're going to look at that now how that happens now there's a common question see at the bottom of the page uh, page eight Explain why proteins are good molecules to make antibodies. In other words, explain why when you look at an antibody, it's always a protein. And there's the answer. Proteins have a very precise shape. Remember all that stuff at AS about molecules and proteins have a primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure. Proteins have a, have a, a very specific 3D shape, globular, the globular structure. That means the proteins are... A globular protein might look like this here, but rolled up into like a, a ball shape, globular protein. They've got a very precise shape. <coughs> and different proteins have different shapes. So another, another protein might have a slightly different shape, and another protein might have a different shape again, and so on. So proteins make the right kind of molecules to make antibodies, because you need different shaped antibodies for different bugs, basically. And <coughs> Uh, the protein is complementary in shape to the antigen, so the shape of the protein fits onto the it fits onto the antigen perfectly. <coughs> so that question is often asked: uh, Why why is the protein not good to uh, antibodies? Now, uh, if you forgive me, I'm just going to turn off this heater for a second. <coughs> Okay, at top of page, uh, page 7 there, I've said about the antibodies. The antibodies are released by the plasma cells, okay, and they latch onto, I should have highlighted the word latch, there. they latch onto the bacteria's antigen, causing many bacteria to clump together in one place. And this clumping is called agglutination. So that's what you have to know about antibodies. <coughs> antibodies, I like drawing the antibodies like this here. They're all different shapes. I like drawing them like a double end on. Because if you put a double end on, that means they can catch on to two bacteria at a time. So each, you see there in the picture, each of the antibodies, each of the antibodies is attached to two bacteria. So it's got a hold of bacteria at either end. And in that way, it can cause, a, cause lots of bacteria to be stuck together. So the antibodies are a bit, in this case, a bit like glue. They stick all the bacteria together. So the bacteria are in what are called clumps. And this clumping has got a fancy name, it's called agglutination. So the clumping is called agglutination. Now, I've said, well, the clump is sometimes known as an antigen antibody complex. Not too important. You could mention that term if you want, but you'll not be asked. 
what that term means. But what, what then, what's the advantage of this agglutinin? What's the advantage of making the bacteria inside your blood or the viruses stick together in groups <coughs> rather than be separate? Well, the answer is if they're all stuck together in a big bunch and they can't get away from each other, then they can't spread so easily around the body. Whereas if they were all loose, all on their own, and they could all go where they wanted, then they could spread easily around your body. So glutination would just the spread of the disease around your body, because it stops the bacteria or viruses getting away and all going to different parts of the body and multiplying in different parts of the body. They're kind of all kept in, in a clump. You might think that makes a lot of difference, but apparently that's the antibodies by keeping the bacteria clumped together in clumps that reduces the spread. <coughs> and the second thing about the clumping is that when the bacteria or viruses are clumped together in big clumps, they're more obvious, they're more visible. More visible to who? More visible to what? Well, they're more visible to the phagocytes, the other, the other cells that are involved here, the white blood cells. And you see there's a phagocyte there, that big giant cell. With the phagocytes have a big funny nucleus. You could look a big nucleus that's like has three bits to it. That's a phagocyte. And they're the ones that do the engulfing and digesting. So if you've got a big clump of bacteria, a big clump of viruses, that phagocyte can spot them more easily. And it can eat them in big numbers. It can eat them all at once, as it were, rather than eating the individual bacteria. It's now can eat them. Oh, you can gobble up a whole lot of them at once. So, so that's the advantage. The, the, the clumped bacteria are more visible to the phagocyte. And the phagocyte can engulf large numbers, or large clumps of the bacteria at once. So you can get rid of them. And you see it just about to swallow to make much of the bacteria. So that's a major effect then of antibodies. Antibodies basically stick to the antigens of the bacteria or virus, causing the bacteria or viruses to clump together. And when they clump together, they can't spread so easily around the body. And they're more easy to more easy, it's more easy to eat them as it were. You don't see it. More easy for the uh, phagocyte to engulf and digest them. Okay. Now you might say, well, that's all. That sounds good. Those antibodies sound like they could do the business. <coughs> they can get rid of the bacteria or viruses. What then do we need with the other kind of lymphocytes called the T lymphocytes? Because we mentioned them as earlier. So I mean, what do they do? Well. Here's what you need to understand. <clears throat> Once bacteria and viruses get into your body through a cut or a wound or whatever way, and they're initially in your body fluids, in your blood. Okay, and they're initially there. <clears throat> now, your body fluids would be things like saliva, mucus, and, but mainly your blood. <clears throat> but there's a difference between bacteria and viruses. In the bacteria stay in your bloodstream. They don't go anywhere else, they stay in your bloodstream. <clears throat> Whereas the viruses, they leave the bloodstream and they go and go inside cells. Not red blood cells or red blood cells, they go inside cells in different parts of your body. So they might go inside your lung cells or your liver cells, your kidney cells. <clears throat> they go they go away off and they go inside cells. Now, why do they go inside cells? Why do viruses go inside cells? And the answer is, they cannot multiply if they don't go inside cells. They need to go inside the cell because they use the parts of the cell, the bits inside the cell, <clears throat> to copy themselves. So the viruses use cells as like factories to make more viruses. Whereas the bacteria don't do that. The bacteria stay in your bloodstream. So the viruses, they sneak away off, as it were, and get inside your cells. And they use the cell to, as a kind of big factory to make more viruses. And once they've made more viruses inside a cell, the cell bursts open and all the viruses come out. And then they, each virus invades a new cell. <clears throat> so notice here that the bacteria and viruses at the start are both in the bloodstream. But the bacteria stay in the bloodstream, but the viruses don't. The viruses, I always imagine them escaping off and hiding inside cells, getting inside cells. <clears throat> and because they're inside cells, the B lymphocytes, the cells that make the antibodies, can get at them. So you need a special type of lymphocyte to attack the viruses once they're 
hidden away inside the cells. And those killer lymphocytes are called T lymphocytes. So the job of the T lymphocytes is purely to attack viruses whenever they're inside cells. So <clears throat> if you get a disease, it's a bacteria disease, the T lymphocytes are not involved. It's just the B lymphocytes because the bacteria stay in your bloodstream. Whereas if you get a, <clears throat> a disease that involves viruses, like this COVID thing or flu or any of these things, and both the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes are involved. The B lymphocytes are involved at the start because they attack the viruses when they're in the bloodstream. And then when the viruses escape inside the cells, along come the T lymphocytes and they attack them, attack them then. So T lymphocytes are purely to do with viruses. So you never mention T lymphocytes if it's not a virus disease. You only mention T lymphocytes if it's a virus disease. And the job of the T lymphocytes is to destroy cells containing viruses. Basically what they do is they go along to a cell, spot that the cell contains viruses, and they simply blow up, destroy the cell. And by destroying the cell, they stop the, the viruses multiplying inside. So T lymphocytes, virus, viruses inside cells. Okay. And T lymphocytes, <clears throat> the immunity using T lymphocytes is called cell mediated immunity. Cell mediated immunity. So we're on to page. Page 8 here, cell media, and it's all about T lymphocytes. And you'll see there, as I've said, this describes how T lymphocytes respond. Okay, and how do they respond to? I've said they respond or react specifically to body cells embedded with viruses. So <clears throat> it also says that they attack all those things there, but those other things are not that important. The major thing you need to highlight is that T lymphocytes destroy cells that are full of viruses. Okay, T lymphocytes destroy <coughs> cells that are full of viruses and by destroying the cell they destroy the viruses. So that top one is the most important one. <coughs> now, what they do is T lymphocytes that <coughs> they spot a cell that contains viruses. Now the question is how do they know that the cell has viruses? And the answer is that when a cell when a cell is invaded by viruses and there's viruses inside the cell, this is one of your body cells. What happens to so say that's your body cell and there's viruses inside. So I'm going to draw the virus sort of like this with its antigens here, it's inside the cell. Okay. And what happens when the virus is inside the cell is that the cell takes some of the antigen from the virus and sticks it on the outside of the cell. Sticks it on its surface. <clears throat> so this is weird. The cell takes some of the antigen in the virus and it puts the antigen on its outer surface. Now what it's doing that for kind of is it's kind of warning the T lymphocytes because the T lymphocytes are out here. <clears throat> they're out in the open. <clears throat> they're outside the cell and what they're say they were passing by the cell. They would spot the antigens on the outside of the cell and they say, oh look, that cell's got virus antigens on its outside. That means it must be in full of viruses. You see, I always imagine the viruses are hiding inside the cell and they can't be seen. And when the cell takes a piece of antigen and puts it on the outside, that any, any T lymphocytes that are going past, they spot it. And when they spot the antigen on the surface of the cell, that's their cue to attack the cell. And you'll see there, <coughs> At the bottom of the page. Oh, by the way, when the cell, and whenever the cell puts the antigens on its outer surface, it's described as an antigen presenting cell. Strange way of describing it. It's described as an antigen presenting cell. And what happens is the T lymphocytes, how do they respond to that cell? <coughs> well, if you're looking there at the bottom of it's page eight again, page eight, <coughs> you see the four boxes, and that summarizes it very effectively there. So you'll see. <coughs> And by the way, the cell that's invaded by the virus is called the host cell. It's the host for the viruses. <clears throat> the host cell is infected with viruses. It presents or puts viral antigens on its surface. And you can see a viral antigen over around there at 3 o'clock on the cell. You see around at 3 o'clock. <clears throat> and you see more viruses inside. In box 2, you'll see that <clears throat> there's a whole lot of T lymphocytes around. And they all uh, have protein receptors that detect different 
viruses. But there's one there described as the correct one, and that's the one that has the matching protein receptor to that antigen. And you see then in box three, and you'll see that the T lymphocyte attaches onto the antigen. And once again, when the lymphocyte attaches onto the antigen, we say that it is sensitized. In other words, it be activated. In other words, it's kind of switched on. And said, okay, are you ready for action now? And guess what? It does exactly the same as the B lymphocytes does. It starts to multiply by mitosis so that it makes millions like itself, all identical to it. <clears throat> now, once, once those millions are made, some of them then develop into what are called T killer cells. Some of the millions become T memory cells. Some of the millions become T suppressor cells. And some of them become T helper cells. So in effect, <clears throat> when that origin, when that T lymphocyte attaches onto the antigen, it eventually results in four different kinds of T lymphocyte cells being made, millions of them. And there's the four. Now, <clears throat> what you need to know is, you see the top of page nine there, just a summary of that. And there's the four types of cells. Killer, t you can call them T killer cells or killer T cells, doesn't matter. Helper cells, memory cells, and fresh cells. And you can see in the box at the bottom of page nine what each of them does. Usually in an exam question, you have to be, you just want to, you just get one mark for each of what each of them does. <clears throat> now here's the, here's the most important one. So I'll put the most important one at the top there. It turns out to be the, as you might expect, the killer T cell. Killer T cells do what? And they make chemicals, right? I would highlight the word chemicals, called perforins or perforin. <clears throat> and that's this chemical. You, you also, in other textbooks, it might say they make enzymes. And they make this chemical called perforin. And what this chemical does is it causes the cell membrane of this cell that's been invaded, causes the cell membrane to be destroyed. In fact, in the textbooks, it'll say things like the perforins punch holes, make big holes in the cell membrane, here, destroy the cell membrane, fill it full of hope, the hope so the whole cell falls apart. In effect, these killer T cells produce chemicals that basically destroy the, the cell that's invaded with viruses. Okay? By destroying the cell. It's a bit like an army finds the terrorists hiding in the big house, hiding in a house. What do they do? Rather than try and shoot all the terrorists, they sort of, they sort of blow up the whole, just destroy the whole house. Don't like using that analogy, but works okay. So they just destroy the house, the house being the cell. <coughs> and that destroys <coughs> the viruses that are inside. <coughs> but it doesn't, doesn't totally destroy the viruses that are inside. <coughs> because if you destroy <coughs> the cell that contains all the viruses, I would have thought some of the viruses escape out into the open. <coughs> now, if they escape back into the open, <coughs> it'd be useful to have the B lymphocytes around. Because the B lymphocytes could then meet them and make antibodies to destroy them. And also, it would be useful to have the phagocytes so they could gobble them up. And this, in fact, is what happens. And one, of the, one of the types of cells organizes this. It's called the helper T cells. What they do is they organize, you'll see what it says there. The helper T cells, I've said, stimulate B lymphocytes to make more antibodies. So they kind of encourage the B lymphocytes to make lots of antibodies. And they also encourage the phagocytes to do more phagocytosis, to do more eating and <coughs> gobbling up of these, uh, of these cells. So it's as if the helper cells are kind of like an organizer. They don't get involved, but they sort of stand back and sort of organize B lymphocytes and phagocytes to <coughs> develop in large numbers so that they can help to attack the viruses as they escape from the invaded cell and escape from the infected cell. Now the suppressor cells are pretty unimportant here. <coughs> all they do is, at the very end of the whole process, when all the viruses are destroyed, they kind of switch off the immune system. They close down the immune system. So they like switch off the lights of the immune system. So, so that's enough, we've done our business here. So that's all the suppressor cells do. The main cells are the killer T cells. They're the ones that make this chemical called perforin. 
which destroys <coughs> simply obliterates, destroys the infected cell. And then the helper T cells, they kind of watch on and they encourage more B lymphocytes and more phagocytes to develop so they can help to mop up any viruses that escape. So, <coughs> so that in essence it is the the two <coughs> the two major systems that you need to know. You need to know about antibody mediated immunity, which is the B lymphocytes and how they make antibodies, and they make antibodies against bacteria and viruses that are in the bloodstream, free in the body fluids, and sometimes it's called. And then you've got the T lymphocytes, and their only job, and they only become involved if it's viruses that's causing the disease, and only when the viruses are inside cells. So their job is to get rid of cells, or virus, sorry, get rid of infested cells, cells that are infested with viruses. If the disease that is in the exam question is to do with bacteria, don't mention the T lymphocytes at all. If it's viruses, then you mention the B lymphocytes initially for just antibodies, and then you also say the T lymphocytes would destroy the viruses <coughs> once they're inside cells. Okay. <coughs> now, on page, uh, page 11 there, and uh, <coughs> by the way, don't worry if there's missing page numbers. It doesn't matter that much. Sometimes I take pages out and put pages in, and I don't bother changing the numbers. On <coughs> page 11, you see a summary then. It kind of compares <coughs> B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. And you see on the left, it says, B lymphocytes attack bacteria and viruses that are free in the blood and body fluids. So they attack them whenever they're out in the open, as it were, in the body fluids. <coughs> on the right hand side, T, T lymphocytes only attack and destroy viruses when they're inside cells. So they attack body cells that have been invaded with viruses. The next box then just summarizes each of those. And then I've got a box that says importance. So when are the B lymphocytes very important? Well, they're important if it's a bacterial disease because <coughs> they're the only ones on the scene. Uh, they attack bacteria that are uh, present in the bloodstream. They're also important in the early stages of a viral disease because they make an antibody to destroy the viruses. <coughs> when is the T lymphocytes important? They're only important for viral diseases. Because they, their job is simply to destroy cells that are full of viruses. <coughs> so you don't mention them at all to do with bacteria. Turns out the T lymphocytes are also important if you have cancer. They destroy cancerous cells and they also do, they also attack transplanted organs <coughs> that are put into your body. They also destroy those as well, which is not a good thing. So <coughs> at the bottom there in the summary it sort of says the two of them work together, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. They work together. The B lymphocytes kind of go first, they're like the first attack force. They'll attack bacteria and viruses once they get into your body, once they're in your bloodstream. <coughs> and then the T lymphocytes only come into action if it's viruses, and the viruses they invade cells. <coughs> bacteria don't invade cells. And the, the T lymphocytes then <coughs> help to destroy uh, infected cells. <coughs> okay, so, so those. Those are the major, and those, that's the major part of that immune topic, and that's often causes Jim a lot of difficulty, just getting through that part. <clears throat> now, I notice now that 53 minutes have gone, so we've been doing this for 53 minutes, and essentially I've only got to page 11 out of page uh, page uh, 20, I think it's 28 pages, <laughs> so it shows you how long this topic is. But <clears throat> generally. The, question, the questions on immunity come from this first 11 pages, the first 10 pages or so, the first 11 pages. Oh, I notice there's two pages 11, but don't worry about that. <coughs> it comes from that, for, for what we've done so far. So uh, that helps you to understand that bit, first of all, and that's, that's a good thing. <coughs> and then the rest of it, the rest of it's also fairly difficult. There's some difficult things we have to talk about. What happens when you get, if you get the disease and then you get it again? And that's really about the memory cells, and, and then there's bits about active and passive immunity. <clears throat> and that's all to do with antibodies, and whether you make the antibodies yourself or you get them given to you, and <clears throat> you get them injected. And then we go on to talk about vaccines. And uh, I'll, I'll leave these things to the next video, because uh, probably in another hour to get through all of this, it's a long topic. <clears throat> vaccines 
and uh, vaccines are basically a way of protecting you against ever getting a disease in the first place by injecting into you a small amount of the dead disease or the dead bugs so that your body sort of reacts to the dead bugs and it reacts in such a way that it's kind of prepared and ready for the main disease if it, if it comes along. Vaccines will talk about a wee bit about organ transplants and I'm just leaping through the pages here a wee tiny bit maybe about that but then another major part of this topic is then talking about blood donations uh, what happens when you get if you're blood group A and you get group B blood into you and so on and so forth <clears throat> there's, quite, there's a few pages on that uh, it can be difficult but it's not too bad and then there's a special kind of blood <clears throat> area called the rhesus system and this gives everybody difficulty this is quite this is quite a difficult thing but it's not too bad <clears throat> uh, and hopefully I've got, I've got it well summarized there <clears throat> and then the rest of it is all downhill then from then on in the last uh, half a dozen pages not so <clears throat> um that'll do for the, that'll do for this video and uh, <clears throat> i produce uh, I'll, I'll do another do another bit on the video on the second half of this topic and then uh, uh, <clears throat> if you're if you're a student who wants to do this uh, you can uh, we can <clears throat> and, and very important very important is the, the, the questions so, uh, I think the best way to deal with the questions is to do a Skype session with me on the questions. Do, first of all, get the questions from me. So text me and you'll get the whole package. And you can do the questions and then you can see where you have difficulty. The questions are, are very different from the, the, the theory stuff. The questions are more important than the theory. And the, uh, the, uh, you have to, you don't go into the exam and recite stuff from, from notes. You're going into the exam dealing with awkward questions. So, you have to the questions. so it's important that you do the questions and then then we would talk about uh, difficulties you have in the questions. And they are quite, they are quite difficult. It's not easy. None of this is easy. <coughs> so that's that. Um, <coughs> and uh, I'll get back to you again uh, with, uh, with the rest of that. Uh, rest of that. Uh, I'll tell you all the rest of it. Okay for now. Okay. All the best. Bye.